Good morning. Welcome to, uh, oh good gosh, what is the day? Well, let's see. I have no idea. I'll have to mark it up later. It'll be up there on the thing if it's if this is if this one gets uploaded like that. I I um if I can get the complete concepts out in one shot, if it comes out clearly, then I I I put them bother to put in the edits and uh, put a date on. Otherwise, I just upload it as is. I call that the distinction is at the end of the uh, title there'll be an HQ, which doesn't mean which it stands for high quality. It doesn't mean the content is necessarily high quality. It means that the uh, the that it's complete basically so kind of a mis mislabel there but anyway let's get started look how dark it is it's getting uh, really making a difference day by day soon it'll be uh, night again before I even begin <laughs> I'll have to figure out a different way to do this or do it in the dark audio only anyway the path of wildness meditation for uh, this day the path of wildness is a, uh, a walk of equanimity a, a balanced movement through life <clears throat> uh, in pursuit of uh, three objectives and uh, guided by seven principles. Those three objectives are uh, first, to uh, develop and maintain through the course of our lives uh, good, sound principles, which uh, um, help us to uh, navigate the complexities of living and uh, make uh, informed decisions uh, and perform, and perform uh, informed actions, so to speak. Uh, throughout the throughout the course of living through as we encounter the challenges of life so good principles are number one to develop and maintain those number two is to uh, cultivate good emotional reactions to the circumstances that happen in our lives so that uh, um, we can uh, be in better control and more and offer a more mature uh, uh, face upon the world a mature face isn't quite the way I mean it, because that makes it sound like you're putting on a particular front, but that's not it. But in a way it is. In a way it's kind of c c controlling better how our body responds to the unexpected things in life, because that's what gets us is when things happen that are unexpected, and uh, we can run away with that, and let our emotions then uh, take control, and that's when we get ourselves in the most trouble. Instead we uh, anticipate not the particular unexpected things themselves but the fact that unexpected things happen and be and stand ready to uh, control our emotions a little bit then we may uh, be able to better weather and get through those things so number two is first is to good principles develop and maintain good principles second is to foster good emotional reactions and number three is to perform good actions and uh, again, that derives from the principles that we have. We uh, perform good actions in accord, in accordance with uh, the values and uh, the good, un the, the, the best understanding we have of life, and uh, how we can make good use of our time here. So now let's get on to the seven principles. The first is the uh, principle of uh, the atomic principle. I always lead in and say the principle of, you can't say the principle of atomic or the principle of atomicism, or <laughs> so I always say it wrong. The atomic principle, and that is nothing more than uh, an observation that uh, everything in the universe is formed of matter, which consists of compounds, and so, which consists in turn of molecules, and atoms, and subatomic particles, which themselves are simply a form of frozen energy which permeates the universe that these things change and reconstitute themselves constantly. And uh, that what is today was something else yesterday and will again be something else tomorrow. And what we are in, as well will uh, is subject to such change. And that uh, death is uh, uh, upon us in no time. If indeed death through change, that uh, what we are uh, will be something else in no time is, is a fact as well. This helps us to be ready for the changes as they occur and uh, also uh, uh, may help us to motivate us to take action uh, through uh, the moments that when during the moments that we have op the opportunity to make hay while the sun shines so to speak so keeping that in mind through the atomic principle the number two is the uh, principle of nature that everything in the universe has a particular nature and including us and that our best living is uh, our best lives are lived in accordance when we can recognize what that nature is for, of other things 
and expect us, expect it as such, and then also to live in accordance with uh, our nature. So to recognize what our nature is and to live accordingly. For example, uh, uh, humans have a particular nature, which I believe is to uh, utilize the developed facility faculties of, of of our of our bodies and our minds, which is we don't have claws or big teeth or strong necessarily any much strength, but we do have uh, big brains that are able to uh, uh, understand and solve problems and uh, under come to understand the world. And that's our nature, is to uh, live in such a way that we can understand the world and solve problems. Likewise, individuals have nature. Uh, this is something that develops over the course of their life, so it's a, it's a moving target in a way. My nature is to uh, uh, walk alone in wild places and to think. That's where I'm at my best. So I strive for that. A lot of what I do here, like going to work and such, is is the sustenance element and uh, maintain, maintaining my, my home and my family. Um, but when, I, uh, when I'm at my best is those moments that I can sneak away and wander alone and, and think. Um, so there you go. So you, the universe has, 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 everything in the universe has a particular nature. We do well when we recognize what that nature is, what human nature is, and in particular what our nature is, so that we can abide that to the best of our ability. Uh, the third is the social principle. Uh, humans are social animals. We need one another. And our shortcut, shortcut to virtue is social ends. So when we uh, strive after what is the, in the best interest of the group, we're in fact doing something virtuous. We have to balance uh, the well that the welfare, uh, the well-being of the group, with a recognition of uh, the uh, rights of individuals, which all good systems of uh, of society and justice have. They have some form of bill of human rights that uh, help us to discern, uh, um, to protect the individuals from the from the welfare of the of the group. We wouldn't want to. Uh, Throw, uh, we wouldn't want to pay, uh, th throw individuals uh, down. For example, uh, you know, like harvesting the organs of every ten thousandth or every th uh, ten thousandth individual to hand them out to those who are in need, which would raise the common good, but would uh, be at the expense of the good of the individual whose har in whose organs we harvested. I always use that example. I need to come up with more. Um, that would uh, that would not be a good thing. So we have to have those individual human rights in place to. Uh, recognize so we don't trample those. Moving along a little faster now because I see that time is going quick and I will obviously run out of memory. So um, next is the uh, uh, principle of temperance which is at the heart of the path of wildness because uh, through temperance we uh, uh, exercise the virtue of restraint and we also uh, uh, reduces our impact on the world by our, our, our reducing the, the, the amount of the way that we consume. But most importantly it gives us the power to be able to control the passions that rise, you know, those emotions those, uh, that arise in our, in, through the course of our living. Uh, it's self-control. So in everything from uh, eating, drinking, uh, working, playing, uh, sexual appetites, uh, all of it. If we can uh, exercise uh, um, restraint, we are uh, on a shortcut to uh, to virtue. Sorry, I'm having a little challenge right there with uh, the person rushed in but on the again on the freeway right there. The man behind me, beside me, was trying to race in a way. <clears throat> so I kind of suppress that anxiety that I feel that that, that need I feel to compete. So I have a little opportunity for temperance, right? That's exactly it, right there. Temper that need because uh, it's not just with. Uh, the uh, consumption of things, it's also with the uh, expression of the running away with things, like a uh, uh, feeling of frustration that might rise and run away with that and have it develop into road rage <clears throat> instead to kind of hold on to it. And you can do that through exercise and practice. So that's a temperance, uh, which is a shortcut to virtue. The next one is uh, the uh, principle of uh, the great indifference. Uh, which is the fact that the universe appears to be devoid of, of interest in us other than uh, uh, ourselves. If you look out in the, into the universe, it, uh, it basically appears to be uh, empty of, of love and caring and uh, uh, interest in us. There does not appear to be any godlike figures that, 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 that supervise and organize things. Uh, and if there are, the people that make claims for that, they have yet to provide any tangible 
uh, good evidence that that's the, that that's the case. It's mostly uh, wishful thinking and uh, reliance on something called faith, which is uh, uh, a shortcut to get to where you want to. You can believe what you want to believe without actually uh, having good reason to believe. And uh, when you think that you're talking, you're communing with God in a, in a wild place, for example, you look up and you don't see the dark emptiness and the, the indifference that I see, but you see instead uh, like something carrying the compassion in, or you sense something carrying the compassion in, compassion that's staring or looking back at you. I argue, I would argue that you're, you're actually having a dialogue with yourself in that case, in a form of exercising a form of wishful thinking. So that's the great indifference. The great indifference is the opposite of that. The great indifference is to recognize that, hey, you go out into the wild to look up and say, hey, the universe doesn't care. It would as soon to see me dead as alive. And in fact, it's not even that interested. If I want to find compassion and love, I have to turn to my fellow human beings, the guy that was racing me beside me on the uh, on-ramp there, uh, and maybe my pets, our pets, dogs mostly. <laughs> So moving quickly now, um, the next one is the uh, principle of uh, reason, which is the governing faculty. It is the very tool by which we come to understand all of these things. The way we, uh, we look at the world, we uh, see the, uh, the, the facts of, of the world that are happening around us, that we recognize our frailties, that our, mind, <coughs> our minds are evolved to understand the world in a particular way, and that the universe is far deeper and richer than that. <coughs> and we, to, to understand where our biases lies, lie and that we may never understand fully our biases and how we can how they relate how they limit our ability to understand the world but we but to not project more than we actually can know because that's where the danger lies that's where we begin to produce gods that don't offer don't have any other reason to believe that they're there but and, and uh, superstitions that uh, are comforting but uh, are not based in truth but uh, instead to use reason to un better understand the world to, and to constantly be in a process of refining and improving our understanding is an iterative um, methodology uh, which reveals uh, truth as always an imperfect with, with a cautionary element as an imperfect uh, uh, model that we are constantly improving upon. So that's the uh, principle of reason. Uh, there, and then finally, the principle of, uh, of virtue, which is the which is the purpose of life, uh, in, in my in my worldview. And virtue is nothing more than uh, a life lived in accordance with the good sound principles towards the objectives that you've set. So we live a life uh, where we understand that the uh, things are changing, that we uh, um, have a particular nature and our best lives are living in accordance with that nature, that we're social animals and our best ends are social ends, that uh, uh, temperance is a shortcut to virtue, that uh, the universe doesn't seem to care, that we need just all we can find is one another if we want, want love, that the reason is the governing faculty and uh, if we can live a life like that, that is the path of wildness. And hey, I got it done before the timer went out. It looks like 13 minutes. Thanks for watching this uh, Path of Wildness meditation for today, whatever day it is. Take care. Have a great day.